Hello, hello. How's everyone doing out there? I'm Bobby. I'm Trey. This is Trey. Uh, we are a couple minutes early here. We're going to be getting things started with our SEO case studies webinar in just a few minutes here. We're going to give people a few minutes to trickle in here. What, 155? We got five minutes. We'll get this thing started right on the dot at two o'clock. How have you been, Trey? Been well. Yeah? Yeah, working hard. Um, having fun. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Working hard, having fun. Gorgeous day out there. Oh, yeah. I will say, though, uh, it would be nice if there was like one more cold front for wow. Florida. Where's everyone watching from today? Put it in the chat. We'll see if any uh, Floridians out there. Looks like we got uh, 50 people live already. Chicago, Natalie uh, coming in from Chicago. Always a cold front on you there. Where in Florida are you, asked John? We're uh, based out of St. Petersburg, Florida, in Tampa Bay. What about you, John? Oh, Williamsburg, Virginia. You know, I went up there as a kid. They have the, uh, the sister park, or the other Bush Gardens, I should say. Oh, yeah, one's yeah. in Tampa here. The other one's in Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah, it's like a different style, Bush Gardens. Like, they have a yeah. different theme and everything. Mm -hmm. um, All right, we got, oh, we got... John's from DeLand, Daytona area, the other side of Florida. Nice. Steve from Wisconsin. Sergio from Cabo San Lucas. Andrew from the UK, Northampton. Boca Raton, we got some more Florida viewers on here. Pamela coming in from the UK. What time is it in the UK right now? I think they're five hours, okay? Math, math. <laughs> We're not a math agency, but I'm going to say uh, <laughs> 7 o'clock. Thanks. I'm kidding. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually, uh, there's a, a third member helping us out on the webinar. Max is going to be manning the chat. He's from the UK as well. Are you doing a video of this? Yes, there will be a recording of this. Um, we'll send out an email tomorrow to all registrants with the video replay and the slides. So everyone will get a copy of this. All right, two minutes here. We're going to get going at 2 o'clock. Just going to give everyone a few more minutes to trickle in here. But we have a value-packed, info-packed 40 minutes coming up here that we are uh, excited to share with you guys. Killer T-shirts. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> if there's a – the Hoth does a lot of things well, but one of them is definitely our swag, they like to call it. We uh, – they – Every, it seems like every month we have a new T-shirt rolling in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when we, we first get the job, we get a little gift, you know, from something in the store. I mm -hmm. had such a hard time deciding which shirt I wanted. There yeah. were like twenty really cool ones, and there's hoodies, there's hats. So yeah, there's a um, lot of good designs. Yeah. There's actually we have also called Swag Pack. If you're a customer, I think you just have to make one purchase. It could be ten bucks or anything bigger than that, but you could then qualify for a hot Swag Pack. You can requested in our back end and it comes with like hot sauce yep. or sorry hot sauce hot sauce and uh it's very hot yeah <laughs> super spicy actually um, all right another minute here then we'll get this started we get a mouse pad a stress ball all of it perfectly how cool greetings from stormy amsterdam richard says storming over there We've had about two weeks of nasty, gloomy weather here in Florida, and I think it's finally passed. Yep. You know, today was the first day I got in my car to come here, and I had a cranky AC. Yeah. <laughs> like I forgot what that feels like. Uh, yeah, the Florida heat is definitely yes. coming back. Summer's starting <laughs> earlier and earlier, it feels like. We did have a pretty strong cold front, though, uh, cold in winter. You know, we did. Was, it was, like, consistently cold the whole yeah. time, which... Doesn't happen with us. So by cold, it's really like 50 degrees. Yeah. Oh, we're busting out <laughs> our North Face jackets then. <laughs> All right. Well, it is uh, 2 o'clock here. I'm going to take our faces off the screen and put the presentation up here, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So, Bobby, I'm the marketing manager here at the Hoth. I do all of our internal 
email stuff. I get all the ads you see on Facebook and Google and YouTube. There's a lot of them. I know. I'm sorry, but I'm the one who does that. Um, and, and Trey, why don't you tell them about yourself? Yeah, so I'm a HopEx campaign manager. What I do is uh, manage SEO campaigns. So we have a lot of products here at the Hoff, and um, you know we get a lot of people who would like some assistance using those products, and that's ultimately my job is to help them achieve their goals. Um, the yes. Way. So Trey is our SEO guru here. I'm happy he's here to join us. Um, but let's get into it. So what are we going to be talking about today? We have three uh awesome SEO case studies to show you guys today. And this presentation is for you if you want uh, real long-lasting SEO results without any shady tactics. There's a lot of companies out there that are giving some advice that we definitely don't agree with, but we are here to simplify. We want to cut down on the noise. Um, there's, again, a lot of stuff out there and it can really confuse people. So again, we're gonna simplify and really break it down with no theory, no fluff, we're going, to, we're going to be showing you three of our clients, real-world case studies, and how we've gotten them results. We're going to show you kind of what our, those companies were doing before they came to us. We're going to show you the strategy that we put together. And we'll even dive in deep and show you the links and the content that we built. And, and the whole idea of this is that at the end of this, you can have some very clear defined takeaways to learn from these that you could implement tomorrow if you wanted. You could pass them on to your team, you could do them yourself, but you can come out of this with a great to-do list for your own company. Now, during this presentation, we are gonna be going pretty fast here. It'll be about 40, 45 minutes of pure training, so if you have uh, any distractions out there, uh, I know there's a golf tournament that started today, TPC Sawgrass, if you're screaming that in the background, if you're watching YouTube, go ahead and pause that just for a little bit here because uh, we're gonna be going quick. And like I said, we do have another team member of ours, another SEO guru, Max, in the chat. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in there. Uh, he's gonna be able to answer those. And if he can't answer them, he's just gonna save them for the end. We're gonna have about 30 minutes of Q&A at the end. Um, so if he doesn't get to your question, hang tight. We'll probably answer those uh, verbally at the end in the Q&A where we can dive in a little deeper. And if you're like myself, if you've attended a bunch of webinars, a lot of companies out there, it's just a straight pitch fest, and I promise this is not. We are all about value here at The Hawk. We really love teaching. We want to show you how SEO works, how you can do it yourself. Uh, if you do stick around to the end, though, we have a little uh, SEO deal if you'd like us to help you out. Now, some of you might know who we are. Some of you might not. That is totally all right. I just wanted to give a quick introduction to The Hawk and our company. So. We have been in the SEO game for going on, what, 11 years now, I think. Huh? It's hard to keep track now. Uh, but when we started out, we were primarily an SEO company. Um, and about two years ago, we launched our PPC product. So we are now a SEM, search engine marketing company. Um, but we, over the years, we have been, uh, we've made the Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies list. Uh, I think the last three or four years now, we've made... Uh, Tampa Bay's uh, Tampa, the Tampa Bay Business Journal's Best Places to Work Award the last few years, and we've been featured in Forbes a couple times as well. So we've been around for a while. We love SEO, and we love sharing our knowledge with you guys. Now, before we dive into the very first case study, I kind of just wanted to give a broad overview of the strategy that you're going to kind of see um, bits and pieces of it through each different case study here. So just kind of a top-down overview here. All three of these uh, clients of ours were on HOTHX. It's our managed SEO program, as Trey was saying earlier. It's our premier flagship product. And every client that you're gonna see today uh, has been on HOTHX for at least six months. Um, the whole point of this, you're gonna see this word uh, you're going to hear this word a lot today, and that's consistency. SEO takes a lot of time to see results. It is not something you can purchase tomorrow and see results the next day. Um, if you want that, maybe PPC is your route to go, which, again, we have a fantastic PPC product as well. But, again, today we're talking about SEO. It's something that you're going to have to be patient with, take your time. It's a, a several-month-long process. But as we're going to show you, the ROI can be very, 
very serious. Now, the, the beauty of HOFDEX is this type of process and strategy that we're going to lay give you the blueprint for today works for any type of business, whether it's e-commerce or local or an online service or publishers. We'll see an affiliate site uh, client today as well. But no matter the niche, it always starts with the SEO audit. And this is basically when we take a look at what the client has done before they came to us. It's very, very important to know the past before you can move forward into the future. And this is where we take a look at what links they've already uh, built, what content is on their site, what type of content, um, how is their anchor text profile, are they over-optimized, are they under-optimized, are they maybe getting a little too close to a Google penalty there, do we have to dial things back a little bit? So the SEO audit is Hands down, the most important part we do, again, we have to take a look at the past before we can move forward into the future, which leads me to the easy wins analysis. Now, this is a fun little uh, report to run here, and it's basically where we look at all the keywords they're ranking for in positions four through 30. Uh, there are 10 positions on every page of Google, so we're essentially looking at the bottom half of page one and then page two and three. And if you're in that spot there, that means that Google already likes you. You're very close to the top, but they just don't love you yet to get you into one of those top three spots. Um, we're gonna see a graphic in one of the case studies here that shows you the click-through rates based on what position in Google you are. And those top three spots get just about all of the clicks out there. So that's why even though if you're on page one but you're at the bottom, you might not be getting that much traffic to your site. So we wanna take these keywords, show them a little love and get them into the top three spots there. Now the last big thing we do is the keyword gap analysis. I know this is one of your favorites, Trey, uh, but this is where we can put in your URL and your competitors. And we simply look at all the keywords that your competitors are ranking for that you are not. And it spits out a giant list of keywords that we can go after. And and how big is that list? Are we talking like dozens or hundreds? Or Yeah, it, it largely depends on the sites we're working with, the industry they're in. Um, the best way to think about the gap analysis is a picture of Venn diagram. You have yourself as one circle and your competitor as another. And the overlap in the middle is ultimately the keywords you share. But there's a lot of untapped potential in some of the keywords that they may be ranking for that you're not yet. So um, if they're in your industry and they're ranking for other keywords that are also relevant to what you'd like to rank mm -hmm. for, it's a great indication of um, more work that can be done Yeah, and, uh, how we can go about that. I love it. And we see these reports get pumped out that have, I mean, thousands of keywords. These business owners come to us and they go, holy crap, this is awesome. <laughs> this has just given us our next three years worth of blog content that we're gonna write about. So. A very, very powerful tool. So we take all three of those things, the audit, the easy wins, and the keyword gap, and we put together a, a complex hierarchy of SEO power going straight to the top, and that top is typically your product page. That's kind of the money page where most uh, companies are wanting traffic to go. That's where you know they want to shoot people so they can add something to their cart and check out. But what we do is we typically write a bunch of blogs, and in those blogs, they link to your product page. As you can see, the arrows going straight to the top there. And then we will build some guest post links and we will shoot those to the blogs, which then pass on the SEO power straight to your product page. So it's a very natural way of link building that passes the power from the bottom all the way up to your money page. So again, just a little overview. We'll dive in a little deeper with each client here. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Trey, and he's going to jump into case study number one. Awesome. Well, thank you, Bobby, and thanks, everybody, here for having me today. Uh, what we're going to look at for the first case study is exploding traffic in an outdoor living niche uh, site. Now, this site is e-commerce, um, and a little bit of background about this site. They started with us uh, back in June of 2019, and at the time, they were getting roughly 400 visitors a month. Um, so here you can see kind of where they were at in terms of traffic uh, prior to the work that we did. 
Um, they did have decent content and some links, but they wanted to rank for competitive terms and just weren't sure why they weren't ranking yet. So that's where we come in. Uh, we did conduct the audit right there from the start, and there were two big lessons that we learned. And the first and one of the most important things to consider when it comes to SEO is search intent. Now, everything will stem from content, and the type of content you use is incredibly important. What search intent is, is it's uh, basically what the user wants to find when they search on Google, and Google gets to determine this through their algorithm. Uh, in order to rank, you have to have the right type of content. It's one thing to have a lot of content on your site and a lot of depth, but you have to be relevant to what Google is ranking right there on the first page. Um, so to give you a quick example of search intent, is it a list? Um, is the result a how-to article? Or, or what's showing up on the search result page, a tool, a product page, a category page? Bobby, the best and my favorite part about this initial step is how easy it is for anybody to get this information. Yep. It's, it's free. People ask all the time, hey, I need what fancy tools do I need? How much money do I have to spend to get this information? And it's right there on Google.com. You can you can search yep. your keyword. Go to Google, type it in, see what's coming up. Is it a free tool? Maybe it is a product page. Maybe it's a blog post. And just replicate it. Yeah, absolutely. And so to kind of expand on this example, I have another example here uh, for the keyword email marketing software. Uh, so when we type in this keyword into Google, we're able to see the different types of pages that show up. So there is a, a rich snippet that initially shows up as position one, and you can tell this is a blog right here. And then the following results as well, just kind of based on the uh, title and descriptions there, um, are all blogs. So um, if anybody wanted to rank for this keyword, well, blogs would likely be um, the best course of action there. Yeah, like we, if we had a client come to us and go, I want to rank my product page for email marketing software. And it's like, we can, we can get some crazy results at the hop, but there's not much we can do when Google is telling us that it has to be an article. Absolutely. And there are ways to uh, get you to rank that product page appropriately uh, for different variations of that same keyword. And of course, within these blogs, we can what's called internally link to those product pages as well. So if someone stumbles across your article, um, they can then be led on a path to your product page within the uh, article itself. So taking a look back at the case here, uh, search intent in regard to this particular client, uh, the keywords they picked out were big head terms related to their service. Um, above ground pools is actually one of the keywords we're going to look at here today. Um, they did have a product page about this keyword, but we looked at what was actually ranking. And um, despite the fact that we saw mixed results, we saw both product pages and blog content uh, show up because they already had a product page in place. We decided to go with the informative article as the target um, to kind of start things and, and kick things off with the campaign. So now that we've covered content and we've covered search intent, the second uh, big uh, lesson that we learned from the audit uh, has to do with links, right? So we need to kind of understand how they work. Everybody hears about backlinking um, and they know that they're important, but what exactly do they do? What kind of role do they play in a campaign? And so initially um, this client came to us with roughly 74 referring domains. Now this isn't total backlinks. These are simply domains that are pointing to the site. Uh, one domain could have three links that point to this site. So um, when we're taking a look at what is currently ranking, we look at this metric for domain rating or domain authority on some platforms. If you can see here for the keyword above ground pools, I've gone ahead and highlighted um, the domain rating, which is labeled DR, and then the um, amount of domains that these first page results have received. Um, so you can see that there are some big heads in the game for this keyword like Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, but there's also some more um, uh, really relative competitors. You know, we're looking at people that have a domain rating of 32, 30, 60, 21, 52, and as far as domains that are being referred goes, um, really 7, 14. This is all within the realm of possibility in terms of what we can do for this client. So they can very well compete up there with the best of them. Uh, like I said, you see a mix of product pages and blogs. So like I said, they had a product page. We went ahead with the blog. Moving forward to, you can kind of get a look at the traffic value uh, for a third ranking position here. For example, the third ranking position has a traffic value of $137.9,000. And if you're wondering what traffic value is, it is essentially an estimate of all the keywords 
that a given result is ranking for. Now, um, if somebody was to pay pay-per-click advertising for these keywords, this is the amount of money that they would have to spend to rank for those keywords. So you can see the true value in SEO here. When you're ranking for something organically, you can rank for keywords that have a high cost per click for sometimes, you know, little to yeah. some money. I mean, it, it's really cost effective, even though it takes time. It's, it's really one of those things where the juice is, is worth the squeeze. So overall, the strategy, we can spare you the boring details, but ultimately after we determined we had the right content, we started building links. And to take a deeper look into the actual link building strategy itself, we utilized a variety of guest posts. So guest posts are high authority backlinks and they come in different domain authorities, right? So we can offer some uh, anywhere between 10 to 50. So we use a variety of anchor texts with these backlinks. You wanna make sure that you're using different variants and you're keeping everything natural, mixing in your uh, exact match keyword when it's contextually uh, relevant. We also utilize foundations, which is a Hoff product. Um, these are uh, in content web 2.0s. You can think of them more like referring subdomains, whereas guest posts are more of referring domains. Um, but the common denominator here uh, is ultimately consistency. We built consistently for about six months before we really started to see um, some results. So, you know, we can see movement sort of between that third to six month period, but ultimately um, we see a lot more come to fruition at that six month mark. So the results, a massive traffic increase. I mean, I say uh, a little bit of a spike there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I almost just want to like, be silent for a second because it speaks for itself in a way. I mean, you can see where they started at 393, roughly 400 visitors, and now they're at about 30,000 visitors a month. I mean, that's just that's crazy. And taking a deeper look into everything, I mean, they massively increased their rankings, their traffic values through the roof. They 73x the traffic from before. <laughs> like I, Bobby, we were practicing this, and I, I had to do the math a couple of times just to make sure that that was accurate because I'm not trying to get called out in the chat here, but. They truly did 73x <laughs> their traffic, and they only spent eighteen thousand dollars with us over the past year, um, averaging at about one point five k a month. Now their traffic value rests uh, rests pretty at thirty seven thousand dollars per month. So that's uh, that's great. Yeah, and if any of you are thinking, I mean, that is a little bit of uh, it's a decent spend a month. The next case study will be showing you what five hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. does. So don't don't tune out yet. Yeah, and even one after that as well is a uh, is another more. Um, Realistic, you know, budget-wise application. Yeah. yeah. So big takeaways here, you have to match um, your content with what people are searching, right? You have to identify page types and match search intent with your content in keyword targets. And if you don't, you're just simply going to have trouble ranking. And this is a very, very common issue that uh, we as campaign managers see on a, on a regular basis. Um, second, you have to build consistently month over month. Um, that that's plain and simple. You know, if, if we're not staying relevant and building links on a regular basis, it's going to be hard to be seen as relevant by Google enough to be placed on the front, first page there. Um, and then lastly, getting high quality links in a competitive niche is truly important. I mean, you saw there was Home Depot, there was Lowe, Walmart. Yeah, all those sites had like hundreds of <laughs> links at the top there. Yeah, but it's no means to get discouraged either. I mean, as you saw, there were, um, you know, other realistic competitors, you know, just like you and me, you know, any, any business owner can get up there with the best of them. It's just a matter of finding that right keyword and um, driving the right links to the right pages. Ultimately. Yeah. So, um, does everybody see how, you know, these slight tweaks ultimately make the difference? Yeah. Hey, uh, Max, I, I think I see a lot of questions firing through. Didn't know if there are any questions about this case study before we move on to the next one. Yeah, there's a couple of good uh, questions come through here as far as this case study, Bobby. Um, so first and foremost, um, Stephen's just asked a great question in the chat, I believe. Let me just pull this through here for you. Stephen's asking, um, how many blog posts did it take in this instance for the site to rank? And I know there's a lot of factors to consider there, but if we could give them a little bit of insight on that side of things. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Stephen, great question, and thanks for dropping that in the chat. Um, in this particular instance, I didn't work on the campaign, but based on my analysis, we were focused on mainly one blog post at a time. Um, and when it comes to content and keyword rankings, you want to have one focus at a time. Now, with blogs, you can write about the same keyword over and over again, but you want to approach them different ways. Uh, with blogs, they're 
better off for long tailed keywords, answering those types of questions that our people are searching online. Whereas with product pages, it's more conversion based. Um, so, you know, a blog post that would be relevant to this particular keyword would be more along the lines of um, how to install an above ground pool or what are the best above ground pools of 2021 or uh, where's the best place to buy an above ground pool, et cetera. So all of those would then internally link to the product page, giving that page a boost. We would drive links to all these blogs. So I don't have an exact number for you, but that's generally how the strategy works. Yeah, and I think it plays into a, a question that a lot of our clients have too. A lot of people want to know, how many blogs should I write? How often? Um, and a great starting point we like to say is just uh, one a week. If you can pump out four articles uh, a month, I think that's a great place to start. And you could even dial it down a little bit or dial it up if you want. But mm -hmm. in general, that's kind of what we like to say. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Max, how about one more question before we jump into the next one here? The question asked here as well was, is there any difference between a web page instead of a blog post in regards to the Google search results? Oh, talking about search intent. Yeah. Um, it's, there's definitely a difference. Uh, and again, that's something that Google kind of dictates itself. Unfortunately, there's no real way to try and battle Google in that. Um, you kind of, whatever phrase you want to rank for, I go to Google, type it in, and see what comes up. You know, is it a free tool? Is it a blog post? And maybe it's not just a blog post. Maybe it's like a guide. You know, a big informative mega guide out there. Is it a short form blog post? Is it a six thousand word huge uh, blog post? So that's one of the best ways. Go go, go to Google and, and see what's popping up. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, Google is right there at, at your fingertips, and um, it's not so much a matter of whether or not posting a blog or posting a, a piece of web copy makes a difference as much as it is aligning your goals with what is currently ranking and being able to kind of go in and mimic that. I mean, ultimately, having both is is uh, encouraged. You know, you want to mm -hmm. be able to have the informative, long tail uh, pieces of content to then support the product pages. So one's not necessarily better than the other. One's not going to result in different things. It's um, it's just a matter of kind of having what you need to uh, get the rankings you want. Perfect. All righty. Well, if there's any more questions, Max, hang on to them. We'll get to them uh, at the end there. All right. Well, let's jump into uh, case study number two here. I'm going to be talking about how we were able to take a brand new site um, and how we were able to get them thousands of monthly visitors over a relatively short amount of time. And this is a good one because we get clients coming to us uh, from all different uh, you know, durations of their business being open. We get some people who have been in business for 10, 20 years and they finally want to start investing in SEO. And sometimes we get a site that just uh, you know, created itself a, a couple days or weeks ago. And that's what this was right here. It was a relatively new site. To give you a little background, it was an affiliate site that creates content around men's grooming. They started with us in August 2019 and most of the commissions they make from their sales are in the 10 to $40 range. So they're not getting huge payouts off every click and sale, but they, you know, it's not just small pennies either. And really quick to back up, for those of you who don't know, an affiliate site is typically um, just a blog site that links out to products. And if someone happens to uh, click on their link and buy that product, they would then get a little commission out of that. One of the most popular affiliate programs out there uh, is Amazon because of course they sell absolutely everything. So you can uh, go become an affiliate and then if someone buys through your site, you essentially get a little commission. So that's what this site was doing. Now in our audit, we uh, this is what we kind of found. You know, Of course it was created in the middle of 2019, but as expected with the new site, there really was no traffic. Uh, because they had only been around for a couple months, but we we made the decision that we first wanted to establish a nice foundation of links and content. Um, you can always hit the ground running pretty fast uh, with Google. A lot of people get uh, a little scared. You know, should I be moving this fast? Is Google going to uh, flag me? Um, you can always move faster than you think, but uh, with this site, we knew it was important to establish a nice little foundation of links and content, and then begin building high-level authoritative links. 
Now, our easy wins uh, analysis was a little different as well because, again, they didn't have anything to go off. As you can see, in August 2019, they were ranking for a whopping two keywords. <laughs> uh, because it was a new site, there were no easy wins for us to play off of. There's no existing momentum for us to use. So we actually kind of defaulted to some high-level keyword research, and we kind of worked with the client to figure out what – keywords to target based off, you know, what kind of products they wanted to link to in order to get commissions off of. And I'm going to kind of quickly show you how to do some very simple yet effective keyword research. So this is a screenshot right here of a um, SEO software that we like to use called Ahrefs. There's a bunch of them out there, SEM Rush, the Hoth has a bunch of free tools you can use. Um, so in the first column, you can see the list of keywords. Second column that says KD, that stands for keyword difficulty. And then the third column, it says volume. So uh, volume is the amount of people searching that phrase every month. So that first one, for example, best beard trimmer, there's 38,000 people searching for that a month. That's crazy. Um, but that keyword difficulty is 37. Now, it's by no means impossible to rank for that. Um, but for a brand new site, um, that was going to be a little tough. So if we move down the list there, you can see that best beard trimmer for long beards was getting a thousand searches a month, which is still really, really good. And it only has a keyword difficulty of 10, um, which as a new site, we knew that we could easily um, rank for that term. And it's very important to do this wisely because like I said earlier, you really want to pick terms that you can get into the top three positions because that is where all the clicks are coming. That graph I talked about in the beginning, here it is. This is the click-through rate breakdown by your position on Google. So you can see if you rank in the top spot, you're getting almost a third of all of the traffic uh, on Google. For, uh, second spot is getting about a quarter of the traffic. Third spot's getting about a fifth of it. And then as you go down the list from there, it gets very, very small. So, um, you know, if you get to page one, it's definitely something to congratulate yourself about. But as you can see, I mean, if you're at the bottom of page one, you're not getting a whole lot of traffic off that. So that's why we took our time to do our keyword research and to pick a term that we knew we had a shot at getting into the top three there. Now, our strategy, basically what we did here, again, we identified some low competition, high reward keywords, and we built links month over month to their target pages. And again, they don't have product pages. They're not selling anything of their own. Um, their product or their target pages were essentially just their blog posts that had links to their affiliate links. So we did a combination of guest post links, and foundational links, just like case study number one. And again, guest post links are high authoritative links. These are the ones that are going to move the needle. And these are the ones that it's great to use your money keywords on. If you want to rank for best beard trimmer for long beards, that's where we're going to use that anchor text in these guest posts. Now, again, you can't, you, you can't make every anchor coming to your site be the exact term you want to rank for because guess what that doesn't look natural to Google you're gonna get flagged for that you gotta have to keep your anchor text diverse so that's what we use our foundational links for it's a great way to diversify our anchor text and what that means is think about it if if you're getting sites to link to you you're not always they're gonna be linking to you with a variety of different words these are the actual words people are clicking on and a lot of the times it's going to be like this site or this post or click here or read more. And those are great ways to diversify your anchor text to keep you looking natural in the eyes of Google. And again, that's that word that we talked about at the beginning, consistency. We built consistently for six months. Now the results, let's start with the keywords here. Again, they've had two keywords ranking when they first started out in August. Um, there are three different shades of orange there. The lightest orange is their total keywords. You can see uh, back in uh, early March, or sorry, February 15th, they were ranking for almost 35,000 keywords, which is crazy, from zero to that. I'm, I'm, I don't even want to do the math on that one. Try. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the next darkest shade of orange 
you can see is the keywords in the four through 10 spot. So basically the bottom half of page one, and they had almost 2000 keywords in that spot. And then the darkest orange there is the most important. Those are the amount of keywords in the top three spots. They're on Google. We've already talked about how important those ones are. And they had over 1200 keywords uh, that we got into the top three spots there. And how did that translate to their traffic? Let's take a look. As of February 15th, they had over 23,000 visitors per month. Um, but go ahead and take a look at the first part of that graph there. You can see it took a while. It took a good uh, six, seven, eight months before that traffic really shot up. And it's tough. It could be frustrating. You're sitting there with your head down, writing content, building links. Nothing's happening. But you just have to trust the process, trust that uh, some great results are going to kick in. It takes some time. Now, the, the last stat, uh, Trey actually talked about this in his case study as well, but estimated traffic value. Again, the amount of traffic they're getting right now from SEO, if they were to have to pay for that through paid advertising, it would cost us or cost them $23,000 per month. And again, they are on a $500 a month plan. They've spent a total of $9,000 with us over the course of 18 months. Um, that is quite the ROI there, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's massive, massive change. So they spend 500 bucks a month maintaining their SEO at this point that they've already worked hard to grow, and they get $23,000 worth of traffic to their website. That is huge. So a couple key takeaways from this client. Again, by knowing how to do simple keyword research, if you don't have any easy wins, um, it can really show you how to go after some low competition, high reward keywords, and it'll shoot you into some top ranking spots there. And again, as a new website, not only do you have to work hard, you also have to be extra patient and consistent. If there's no momentum coming into your uh, SEO strategy, you really got to be able to devote at least six months to it. And again, by building quality, diversified links consistently, you're going to start moving closer and closer to your goals. So I'm, I'm glad we could pull in this case study because we have a lot of people who come to us with a brand new site. And this is a great way to kind of show you some realistic numbers and timeline on, on how that could work. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Hey, Max, before we move on to the next one, do we have any questions uh, in regards to the second case study that we can help answer here? into uh, one percent into hot decks from Eric so first and foremost is there a specific number of links in order to drive more traffic what determines the amount of spending needed to achieve a company's goals there's uh there's no real magic number but like uh, one of the screenshots that Trey used in his case study um, you can use several SEO tools out there there's some free ones on our site and you can see how many links uh, the current sites on page one on Google have and it kind of gives you a good idea of what you have to shoot for Yeah, we did discuss this briefly with case study one where we took a look at the amount of referring domains um, on or for the pages that are ranking on number one of Google for a uh, keyword in particular uh, above ground pools I think it was we yeah. were able to see some pages had about 200 referring domains some had about seven so Ultimately, it's somewhere in the average, you know, we just want to have a ballpark estimate. Like you said, there's mm -hmm. no magic number, um, but the, the true key, uh, if there was to be a, quote, magic factor, would be uh, to do it consistently, to practice link building consistently and, and stay relevant in that regard. Yeah. I, kinda, I think that's kind of the strange thing about, well, there's a lot of strange things about Google's algorithm, but uh, like even in your example there, the top two had like hundreds of referring domains, and then there was like, a site with seven referring domains right below it, up above other sites with hundreds. So, uh, you know, you don't always have to have a crazy number. You just have to have the right links and the right kind of content. Absolutely. All right. Should we uh, jump into number three here? Yeah, let's jump into number three and then we'll pass take it some back more to questions you. afterwards. Awesome. So I really, really like this upcoming case study. And what we're going to look at has a lot more to do with um, the effect of one page of content in terms of localized rankings. And so with this case study, we are ranking a local site on page one for some high value city terms. And I, I did see a question pop up in the chat regarding uh, uh, traffic versus conversions, right? Not every time does 
a lot of traffic actually mean a lot of conversions because at the end of the day uh, it's one thing to get those visitors but we got to get money in the door right so we're going to take a, a look at this and focus a little heavily uh, a little more heavily on on that side of things so quick bit of background about this client um, not necessarily brand new uh, but still young in terms of backlinks and traffic and things like that. Uh, they are a window and roofing contractor in a large city, um, which can be competitive, but very lucrative. Um, they started with us back in June of 2020, only getting about 70 visitors per month. After our team conducted their audit, um, of course, we were able to realize they didn't really have a lot of traffic and they didn't have much local content on their site either. Um, they needed links and localized content to be able to compete. Um, you know, whenever you create content, generally speaking, about things like services in the area, if you only cater to one area, you have to mention the area you cater to. And so we're, we're going to dive deeper into that here. And since the client wanted to rank for localized terms, they didn't really have a lot of content that reflected that. So there weren't a ton of easy wins for us to capitalize on. Uh, we were able to identify that right away in the SEO audit that our team's able to conduct with each Poddex campaign. So like I just mentioned, the thing about local is that you have to have the content to support the rankings. That not only goes for the general keyword you're targeting, but also the area and the location you're wanting to rank in. Um, you must must build out pages for each city that you want to rank. And Bobby, I don't know about you, but even as a young kid on websites, before I knew what SEO was, I would see a locations area sometimes. You know, if, if you go to like a service a service page or a, a website that offers a service, they would have right there in the menu option locations and. It's funny, now I know what all that's for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta have the page if you wanna rank for it. Yeah, so what's funny about these types of keywords that we're gonna look into is the search volume versus the cost per click. So a lot of times we will get these local clients or these clients that wanna rank locally, but they also wanna rank for the high dollar keywords or high search volume keywords. In this example, we're gonna take a look at the keyword window replacement, which by itself, uh, you can imagine it, probably has a pretty high search volume. Um, but what you need to have and need to keep in mind is that uh, Google personalizes searches. So if I'm in the Tampa area and I search for window replacement, sure there may be uh, websites that are ranking for this keyword, generally speaking, but the results are actually going to be localized. And the only way your page can show up on this is if you also have localized content. I went ahead and kind of uh, put a green box around some of these local um, pages and you can see that um, New South Window, they have a St. Petersburg location page. Home Advisor has a, a blog about uh, nine best window replacement services in St. Pete. Um, Yelp has some information regarding St. Pete. So you can see the effects of localized search on a generic ranking here and the importance of having that localized content when it comes to ranking for some of these high search volume keywords. And up in the top of this slide, if you look in the actual search bar itself, I have a little tool that tells you the cost per click and the search volume for whatever it is you just type. So search volume for window replacement is pretty high, 135,000 searches a month with a cost per click of $20. Now when we take a look at window replacement, St. Petersburg, Florida, when I add that location to it, you can see two things. You can see a decrease in the amount of monthly searches right there in that, uh, that 50 um, visitors indicator. And you can also see the cost per click increase, right? So we went from about a dollar or about twenty dollars cost per click to thirty-four dollars cost per click, where we went from hundred thousand monthly searches to fifty. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny about that, but this is us getting more into the answer um, for that person's question regarding conversions, where um, the more localized you get, the more valuable your keywords become oh, yeah. in a sense, big time. Yeah, when, when someone's searching this, they're looking to convert. Right, so it's not like they're asking a question to Google saying, "Hey, how do I replace a window?" In that case, blogs would probably show up or YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're looking for window replacement, St. Pete, Florida, they want someone to do it for them. They're looking to get this taken care this of. This is so, a high intent keyword yeah. that someone is likely to convert very soon after they search that word. Absolutely. And aside from the content that shows being localized, uh, you can see that the page type has shifted in terms of what's now number one. If I go back to the previous slide. Um, you'll see that there are more blogs, whereas now as we move forward, there are more service pages, right? So we're getting more of those uh, here as we um, take a, a deeper look into the search. So just as much as we must build out uh, specific pages for each location, we also need to build out uh, localized pages for each service too. And if not, having a page for each service, generally speaking, is a best practice. So taking a second look at another service of theirs, roofing contractors, 
you can see here that um, they have this particular uh, website at the bottom um, does happen to have a roofing contractors service page. Um, above it, you do have some of those blogs from, from big dogs like Home Advisor, Expertise, and Yelp. But if we go to another option like Gutter Clean, you can start to see more blogs, but you can also see individual service pages. If I take a look at a specific location like Tampa, Gutter Cleaning Tampa, then we start to get more of these service pages showing up in the top position. So these first few results um, have to do with these services as opposed to like the Angie's List result or the Yelp.com result. And we even have a homepage for a website called TampaGutterClean.com that's also showing up. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think that's so important. So we get a lot of people that come to us and they're like, well, I want to rank for Orlando HVAC services. And they're like, well, all right, um, what's the link to your Orlando HVAC services page? And they go, well, well, I don't have one. I'm like, well, okay, well, that's step number one. We need to first build out the page and then we can work on ranking it and and it's a pretty easy thing to do you know you don't have to write brand new content for each different city you're in you just have to change it up a little bit and before I mean in a, a week or so you could have service pages for the entire state of Florida or something you know it's, absolutely it's pretty easy to do yeah and so with all these pages um, comes kind of a responsibility to make sure that the um, sitemap and the URL structure is, is appropriate, right? So mm -hmm. part of what on-page SEO entails is not just the body text, not just the content, um, but also the URL structure, the, the metadata that goes in place. Um, and so I wanted to show a couple examples of how you can structure your URLs, how you could structure your sitemap um, to further tell Google that you want to rank for these keywords. So here's a couple examples um, where you put the domain, the state, the city, and then the service. Um, now, something I really want to express here is that you really should think about putting your business first before SEO in any instance. Um, when it comes to the way you lay out your website and uh, you know how you're viewing your site, think about being genuine as a business first and foremost. So if it requires you to have these many folders where you have to have a Florida, a Florida subfolder, a Tampa subfolder, and have all the linked pages within, then definitely do that. But there are also some clients that come through who just need a simple service page for one location. In this instance, I added an alternative URL structure where um, at the bottom of the Tampa section here, you can see a couple asterisks where it says domain and then goes right into the page gutter-cleaning-tampa, Florida. So if you, uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that that in itself is the keyword. Yep. Um, so that's another tactic that you can utilize there uh, when it comes to URL structure. Now, moving on to the content linking strategy of this actual case. Well, we used a combination of foundation links, guest posts, blog content, web copy. Now, the important one here is going to be web copy. With web copy, this is content built for service pages, whereas Blogger is built for blogs, or sorry, Blogger is built for <laughs> informative pieces of content. Of course, it's built for blogs. Uh, web copy is built for conversions, right? So one is to answer questions, one is to make that money. And so we wanna be firing on all cylinders, answering questions, internally linking to the service pages. But here with this case study, we're really looking at the effects of um, a product called web copy. So um, to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the overall strategy, again, you wanna target links to these blogs, which then internally link to the service pages. Now, if you jump on Hotfix, your campaign manager uh, will advise you according to the industry, according to whatever particular situation you have to be in. And there are instances where we will target these service pages directly with links. Uh, we really have to diversify where we're putting our links um, on your website. So they'll be happy to help you with that. But generally speaking, this is the best rule of thumb to maintain as much of a natural presence as possible. Now, results. Before we dive into these results, I wanna give a bit more background on the case. This client only spent $270 on web copy, right? So $270 on web copy, and this is kind of just when they were getting started with us. Um, they were building some links to begin with, but then they realized they wanted to create these service pages. Our team had been kind of nudging them to do so. So they went ahead and did it, and here is the result. Now, their uh, traffic value increased. They have about $736 in total traffic value, and you can see that the traffic is just climbing up there. Since they implemented that piece of copy right here um, before the new year, things have been taking off. And uh, in, in, in comparison to a backlinking strategy, you can see that with this particular situation, they only have one referring domain. That, that number one right there is one referring domain points to the page, and they became number one for one of their target keywords, window repair in the location they're in. We have to gray that out for some privacy, but 
If you take a look at the keyword volume and the uh, cost per click associated with this, it's not about getting a lot of traffic. It's not about having you know hundreds of thousands of visitors to your site. Um, like it was mentioned earlier, it's about getting the right traffic. It's about getting those conversions. And so in this case, that is ultimately what we're focused on, those high cost per click keywords with very concentrated search volumes. And here at the bottom, you can see other keywords that are on page two now, easy wins, where there really weren't many before that can be capitalized and tapped into by simply driving more links to this page. So because they only have one referring domain, the potential for this page is massive. And so the results are continuing to climb. I'm taking a second look at another page on their website that they did the same strategy for. You can see they're starting to um, see a lot more easy wins come up out of the ground. You know, we have a lot in positions 12 to 18, 12 to 20, uh, where the cost per click is $10, $13, $18. I mean, this is huge. If you if you really combine, you know, the value of how much money you would be paying in ads, it, it totally is worth it to, yeah. um, to invest into something like this. So... Um, just to quickly recap on the results, now they have 270 visitors per month and counting, but again, we address that it's about the quality of traffic. Their traffic value is now $736 after only investing 230 in a one web copy page. So mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive. I mean, imagine if they were to do this across the board for every page. Right. You know, mm -hmm. some people target more than one area. If, if you target eight areas, you know, and you have eight pages, you could 8x this traffic value, essentially. Yeah, and I think that's a great lesson. It's not always about getting a ton of traffic. It's about getting the right traffic to your site. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, uh, real quick, before we dive into some more questions, I want to go over a couple of takeaways. In local campaigns, in local ranking, you have to have pages that are specific for each thing you do. Um, a lot of traffic, like we mentioned, isn't necessary. It's really about getting the right traffic. And, uh, you know, feel free to touch base with one of our SEO uh, experts here and they'll be able to pinpoint what keywords will get you those conversions so you can continue to run and grow as a business. And then adding blog content can provide contextual relevance. Again, you want to kind of fire in all cylinders. You don't want to put all your eggs into one basket per se, um, but this was simply to focus on the effects of local rankings and what we would do differently within a campaign uh, for someone that comes to us with that goal in mind. All right. Well, thank you. That was a that was a very, very important one. So I think we have a lot of local clients out there. So uh, we're going to hold off on questions right now. So we got the Q&A coming up in a minute here. And I know we're running a tad uh, long here as far as our 40 minutes I promised you in our lesson. But I uh, just wanted to show you how, can you see how this can work in any niche? As we saw today, we saw an e-commerce site, an affiliate site, a local site. I've seen questions in the chat. Can it, can this strategy worked for XYZ, an ABC niche. We have clients all across the board, and we're actually going to rapid fire through some results in a few minutes here. You can see, you can see all the, uh, the different niches we've been in. But just a very, very quick uh, recap of today. Easy wins, great way to find some hidden potentials in your rankings. Uh, you got to have strategic content and link building if you want to set yourself up for success. But some of the biggest takeaways to remember from these case studies is one, make sure you have the right search intent. Go to Google, search your keywords, see what's showing up and model that. Uh, two, you gotta be able to get the right number of quality links with the right anchors consistently. And we talked a little bit about that as well. There's a lot of ways to see how many links your competitors have out there. And then of course, number three, be patient and consistent, especially if you're a new site, you got to keep your head down, grind it out for a few months, and know that good stuff is coming. So who out there would like to get results like these for your site? These are things that you can do yourself. You can write the content. You can build the links. Anyone can do it themselves. Um, if a lot of you out there are probably some very busy business owners, if I had a guess, the Hoth is here to help if you would like some help. And again, all of these clients that you have seen today have been on our premier product called Hoth X. Uh, the way Hoth X works is you get paired up with a dedicated campaign manager such as Trey and Max, and we have about eight others as well, and they fully manage your SEO campaigns. They're gonna design a custom strategy for your site and for your niche and for your competition. They're gonna work around that do all the research, build the links, write the content. And the best part about this that I love, and it's, I think it's often overlooked about one of the cool parts of HothX is that it's 
as hands-on or as hands-off as you want. If you want to let us do everything, we do it. If you've been doing your SEO for a couple years and maybe you want to kind of help in the transition for us taking over, we are happy to work with you for a few months and really engage, figure out what you were doing before, and then get you involved in the process. So as hands-on or as hands-off as you'd like, you're going to get transparent monthly deliverables. You're going to see exactly what links we built and then also you'll get to see tracking and reporting. So here is the deal. Again, I talked about it at the beginning. Thank you guys for sticking around here. Um, HothX normally starts at $500 a month. It goes in $500 increments. There's also a $250 setup fee, but we wanted to give you a little deal for sticking around and listening to Trey and I uh, talk about SEO and links and content and all that fun stuff today. So for our webinar special, um, for HothX, if you sign a six-month contract, which again, we've been talking about it on every case study today, you need to at least be committing to around six months if you want to see some real results. So you can just commit on paper in a contract, and we're going to double your deliverables in the first month. So that means you're going to get double the links, double the blog posts um, for any level that you get, whether it's a HothX 500,000, higher than that, we're going to double that order and really get your SEO off to a strong start there. We do have one more little bonus we want to throw on again for listening to us today, and it is a free Hoth syndication. We actually haven't mentioned this product much today, but it's a really cool way to distribute and syndicate your content, uh, whether it exists or not. We can write something for you too, and it'll go out to 100 major media news outlets out there. And it is the perfect way to kind of get seen by a new audience, and of course, build some links in the meantime. So that is the deal for today. Going to double the deliverables in month one when you sign a six-month contract, and then you'll also get a free Hoth syndication, which that Hoth syndication is a $100 value. So um, as you can see, over $600 in bonuses right there. The way to get it, you have to go to the hop.com slash go. We have set up a little landing page, and you just have to book a call with one of our SEO consultants. Um, and the way it's going to work, it's also – even if you're, you still have questions about this deal, it's a strategy call. You can go there and just come with your questions. And our SEO consultants are want to help you through it. Again, we are very value first here at the Hoth. We can take a look at your strategy, your niche, kind of give you some pointers on where you should go. Um, and then, again, if you want to lock in a six-month contract, we can get that going as well. Now, while you're thinking about it, I wanted to show you a couple more Crazy results we've been getting on HothX here. This is a health and wellness local site, over a 400% increase in keywords. Canadian e-commerce site, they are now ranking for over 23, or sorry, not ranking, but they have over 2,300 visitors a month. Um, so again, all those questions in the chat, will this work for XYZ? This is our shotgun style right here. A local therapy site, look at that mountain. A mobile app development firm, 600% increase in traffic, appliance e-commerce, over 500% increase in keywords. Uh, we have physical testing e-commerce. They are ranking for over 11 or almost 11,000 uh, visitors per month. A rehab site, 26,000 uh, visitors per month. So stuff like this. This is why we love HothX. We hope you like it. Just have a couple more we wanted to show you here. An apparel site, boating supply company, web hosting in the UK, a local salon ranking for over a thousand keywords, specialized lighting, marketing agencies. Yes, our marketing agency helped another marketing agency with their marketing. It happens a lot. Home goods store, local bail bonds. The list goes on and on, guys. We have done it for every niche under the sun. You name it, we have done it. So join HothX today. Go to thehoth.com slash go. Go ahead and book your SEO strategy call. I'm sure you got questions before you go ahead and commit to something like this, and that's what we're there for. We can take a look at your site, dive in deep, answer any of your questions, and get you going. So here's how it works. You go to that landing page. You're going to find a little calendar like this. Just pick a day that you want to chat. It'll pull up some times. Click on a time. Fill out some info right there because we want to take a look at your site so we can kind of have an idea and get some info before we hop on a call with you to make it worth your while. And then uh, that is it. You will have locked in the deal. If you decide to do it or not, at least it is locked in. So 
So that is it, guys. Thank you for joining us. Again, my name is Bobby Bishop. I'm the marketing manager, and that was Trey Gonzalez presenting some of the other case studies. But um, that is it. We're going to go ahead and jump into some Q&A now. I'm going to take a sip of water here. We've been talking for a while. Um, but Max, if you want to uh, unmute yourself there, we're, uh, we'll kind of just go rapid fire with the Q&A. If you have any other questions, put it in the chat. I think uh, some really valuable insights there as far as what we do, our processes, and certainly uh, some of the results we're able to deliver for our clients. That's great. But um, certainly a lot of questions really revolving around some of the areas we've already covered. Um, specifically, will this work for Y industry? Will this work for, you know, X niche, et cetera? What, can you just elaborate a little bit further in terms of how our processes kind of operate across the board and how we can help anybody out with their SEO? Yeah, absolutely. Great questions, too. You know, ultimately, if it ranks on Google at some capacity, we can help you out. You know, if it has to do with, it, with anything that can then show up um, on a search engine result page, we are there to get you to number one. Um, certain keywords may or may not uh, be harder to rank for than others, but that definitely doesn't stop us. So if you're uh, curious about whether or not your industry is a good fit, um, whether or not your business is a good fit, I would definitely recommend scheduling a call with one of our SEO experts and they can further assist you in uh, maybe talking in a bit more detail about your business and about your goals and how we can help them there. Elaborating a little bit further on that. Um, lots of really good feedback coming in here from everyone all over the world, so glad to see that. Um, I don't think there's any kind of outstanding questions here. Is there any that have cropped up that you two have seen on your side while you've been running through? Yeah, webinars? I actually saw a great one come up from uh, Carrie right here. She said, how do you handle white labeling HOFX for an agency's client? So that's a great question that we didn't really dive into today, but every single product at the HOF is designed to be white label first. It is automatically going to be white label. Um, so the way it typically works, um, actually I want to hand this to Trey here because you kind of handle a lot of agencies in your clients here. So how does that work? Yeah, so uh, HotFX develops a totally custom strategy for you. We do have resources that are white labeled. So for example, all of our reports when a guest post is published to kind of give you a receipt of what was purchased and and essentially the deliverable in its final form, we do deliver everything in white label form. So you can then copy the link, send it to your client, and show them that the work has been done and they can do things there. We do also have a dashboard, which you can also forward to their own clients, um, and it's also white labeled as well. So um, if there are any other bits of information that you need, our campaign managers can export files for you and send you more detailed information on the side through Google Sheets or things like that. Um, I know I personally have even gone so far as to make a white labeled screen share video for somebody. Yeah, time, that's you know? a great so way to do it. And almost made it seem like I was right there, you know, with the other, with the, with the marketing agency that I'm working with. Um, so it, we can get really, uh, really in depth and have a lot of fun with it that way. That's ultimately how our, our white labeling works. Awesome. I see a question at the top here from uh, Emily uh, Griffin. What would you consider as foundational ways? Again, the way these are working. Uh, we're really trying to diversify our links here. These are going to be all of your kind of benign keywords. Uh, for example, uh, click here, this post, read more, uh, stuff like that. Stuff that would a site would probably naturally link to your site with. That's what we want to do here in order to keep our anchor text looking natural in the eyes of Google. I see another great question too from Amber Content asking, what if our easy link keywords are fairly random words that don't really matter for our industry. And this is a great, great question that we get all the time. You know, when someone signs up for Hotfix, they instantly get a, a research report that our system generates for them. And with that research report, you're able to see some of your easy wins. Now, on the onboardings, I always get this question, you know, why am I getting all these irrelevant keywords showing up? And at the end of the day, we are at the mercy of Google. They're going to rank you for what they see fit. But what's important to know is that we do have some control over this. You know, with a, a campaign manager kind of um, taking the lead with your site's SEO, we'll handpick certain easy win keywords that are relevant to your business, that are relevant to what you want to go after, whether it be conversions or traffic or even both. Um, so like I said, these strategies are totally custom. We're able to pinpoint exactly which keywords you want and filter through the bad and uh, manage the content as such in that way. Perfect. 
Um, this is a question for you, Trey. What was the uh, browser tool that you were using that uh, in your that showed the CPC and the search volume? Yeah, so I recently jumped on that. A colleague of mine, Ryan, shared with me uh, Keyword Surfer. So they do have a free version. Okay. Super helpful uh, when you when you're diving deep into some SEO tools. Um, it even goes as far as showing you word count. So um, just in the search bar itself, it shows you volume and it shows you cost per click according to. Uh, according to SEO Surfer there. But then on the right hand side, typically where our Google My Business account would be, it tells you the average word count for all the pages on a search result page. And actually there was another question I saw earlier asking about word count and what the optimal word count is. And again, modeling is kind of the idea, very similar to page type. You also want to kind of model uh, after the word count. You, know, you don't want to uh, be posting 2000 more blog articles when Google is essentially ranking 500 word articles as number one, number mm -hmm. two, number three. Good question here from uh, Igbula. Hi, I bought a website only to discover it is a multi-language blog. I removed the auto translation plugin. Google never allowed the blog to rank in English since I took over. Advice, please. Uh, that is a great question. That is a question I do not have an answer for right now, but luckily we have calls. Go ahead and book a free call to hot.com slash go. Uh, we have some people here that are much, much smarter than I am, and they can take a deep dive in. They can get your URL, and they can see what the heck's going on. So please book a call with us. Uh, we'd love to uh, help you out with that. Uh, Eric Tate, I'm new, but what do you mean by guest post to create the natural presence? Um, you want to kind of break down what a guest post is? Like how do people guest post if by themselves or on their own? Yeah, absolutely. So guest posting is um, one of the key strategies when it comes to backlinking. Um, think of it like a reference. Um, if you are applying for a job and you submit your resume, you have references on that resume, and those references tell your potential future employer how credible you may be. Um, and it's the same thing with Google. When you have a website, think of that like your resume, and these guest posts are references that point to your website and tell Google, hey, they are true, they are authority, and we back them. So uh, a couple ways you can do this, of course, is through uh, building links with us here at the Hoff Via. We have products that save you the legwork. Um, it's really simple. You just put in the page that you want to target, the anchor text you want to use, and then we do the rest. Uh, a lot of people that do uh, perform guest posting on their own find it to be quite tedious, from what I understand. I've never actually done it myself. I've really only ever used the Hoff for it. Um, but feel free to try, um, essentially reach out to some websites and see if they'll post the blog and link back to your site and hopefully you find some luck that way. Yeah, I've done a little bit um, and it, it is very tedious. You know, you reach out to a site, pitch them a few topics, see if they give you the go ahead. Um, the only thing I found out is that there's usually a bunch of other sites emailing that site as well. So you really have to have some good topics and a pitch to stand out and then you write them, that blog for them, they get free content, and then there's a link in there back to your site. So, alrighty, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, moving on down with HoffX, is there a specific number of links built in order to drive more traffic? What determines the amount of spending needed to achieve a company's goals? We kind of talked about this a little bit there. One of the best ways to do it is to see how many links your competitors have, and then we can kind of just do it a little bit better than them. <laughs> That's one of the best ways is to model. Model what the successful uh, company ranking in the top three spots is doing and kind of model their strategy there. All right, let's find another one here. You like that one right there. Right there? Okay, yeah, for so, it. so John asks uh, most link building, or he asks, so most link building and ranking is being done primarily through blog posting. And where are these blog post things happening? How do you determine what blog do you post to? So um, it gets really hairy and confusing because we're using a lot of the same terms for both on-page and off-page SEO. And to kind of further uh, explain the difference, we do have a blog service that posts blogs directly on your website. If you have a WordPress site, we can get that done. And so that's important for what's called internal linking and link targeting. What we'll do with those blogs is we'll take guest posts and point to those pages. Now, the guest post itself is actually also a blog. So it can kind of get confusing in that way, but if you're able to mentally separate the two and just understand things from a link perspective as opposed to a content perspective, you may find some additional clarity there. 
Uh, but generally speaking, that's our strategy is to create content, drive links to that content. Um, and so, yeah, if you have further questions, definitely call us and we'd be happy to explain the difference a little bit further for you. Steve Pratt has a good question here. I said, is it safe to add a key phrase to a uh, GMB, which is Google My Business, um, a Google My Business business name to help rank higher in the map pack? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, absolutely. So this takes me back to my previous point uh, with case study three, talking about putting your business first before SEO. You want to remain as genuine as a business as possible and not lose that, that, that brand um, awareness, that brand quality that you can have and that you can create. Um, if you are stuffing keywords into any content, whether that be your GMB profile name or a blog on your website or the anchor text for your backlinks, it's going to seem unnatural, not only to an algorithm, but also to people. Um, now, if you create your business name to be a particular keyword, well then, bingo, you hit the jackpot. Because if your business name, your brand name is also the keyword that people are searching for that is relative to your business, then it's a win-win. And you're able to maintain that natural, genuine presence as a brand um, without spamming people and stuffing the keyword. So, all in all, I would say that unless your brand name includes the keyword, I would stay away from stuffing the keyword into your GMB name. The best way to get ranked on the map pack is to create local citations. We do have a product here um, that can also be used in Hotfix that we talked about. It, essentially what it is is it creates local listings called map listings. Uh, map stands for name, address, and phone. What this does is it verifies with Google that you are who you say you are, and the more listings of these you have, the better chance you have of ranking. So if you got more questions, again, feel free to reach out. We can dive deeper into how that may or may not affect your business and whether or not it would be a good fit for you. All right. I'm going to answer one from Andrew right here. Um, but he's asked, does adding an HTML sitemap to your footer benefit SEO? Um, yes, sitemaps definitely help SEO. If you don't know how to create one, there's a bunch of free sites out there that can kind of crawl your site, make a site map, and then you could submit it. Um, more, the more important part is to Google Search Console. That's the way that's really gonna help your SEO to kind of break down what, to tell, break down to Google what pages your site has, the hierarchy of your page. Um, I would definitely recommend, take, it only takes a few minutes, definitely go ahead and do that. Yeah, and so it's like Dion asked a question here, Someone asked in the chat about Google frowning upon guest posts. Can you explain how your guest post service isn't problematic, but rather beneficial um, versus Google here? So this is a common question that we get. You know, people always ask, oh, are, are these PDNs, you know? Mm -hmm. is, is this safe for my website? Is it going to hurt my website? Google has come out and put out statements about links saying maybe they don't work, saying you shouldn't invest in SEO because everything has to be natural. Well. What we're doing is 100% natural. In essence, if, if somebody has a website and they point to your website and it happens to help you rank better, then it works. And what we found over the past 11 years is that building links continues to work despite the fact that Google continues to say that we shouldn't build links. So, um, you know, at this point in time, this is what we're doing. And we are a company that will always kind of adapt and move. So, should anything happen with an algorithm update, uh, we would be probably ahead of the curve there in terms of um, you know, being able to still deliver results maybe in a, in a new way or so. But for the time being, guest posting does work. It's been proven time and time again. Um, these links are natural and good for your site. Hey, Andrew, I apologize. I totally misread your question there. You said, I don't need an XML site map. I mean, an HTML and link placed in the footer. Um, that is a great question. Trey, do you know anything about that? If not, we might have to have him book a call to dive in deeper there. Yeah, absolutely. So having sitemap in your footer does help and benefit SEO. Um, you know, it's it's very similar to having the menu options. Typically, it's just kind of laid out a little bit more. So well, it depends on the type of business. You know, it's it's not a make or break scenario. It can help support, um, but it's not going to be the only factor that results in ranking. So one of those things that can help, but isn't a necessity in, in, in total. All right. We are winding down to a few questions here. Again, if you have any questions that you really want us to dive in deep, go ahead and book a call right now at thehop.com slash go. A great strategy session for free. You can pick the brain of an SEO expert. And again, if you're interested in our offer for double 
the deliverables in Hoffex in your first month. When you sign a six month contract, you can lock it in on one of those calls as well. To say 2021 is gonna be the year of SEO, why not get it started now? All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got Dillian, the strategies explained so far are largely based on business and purchasing of products. Can the same strategies, the audit, easy wins, and gap analysis be used in other situations such as job hunting? Also, which of these strategies would you recommend for optimizing LinkedIn profiles? That's an interesting question. I, I guess, personally, I've never thought about a lot of these strategies in the terms of job funds. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, and I mentioned this briefly earlier, but essentially, if there is a search result page for a keyword, it's something that we can work with. You know, it doesn't matter the site, doesn't matter the niche. What we would do is audit what is currently ranking and, and see if that just simply put aligns with your business. And if it doesn't, maybe there would be a better route for you, like paid advertising. But I can say that, uh, based on experience, there is an industry out there for job hunting um, and that it's definitely worth tackling. Uh, as far as LinkedIn profiles go, you can always build links to your LinkedIn profiles if you want to. You could uh, purchase guest posts by themselves or take advantage of some of our authority boosters when those are on sale um, and just start driving links to them. Again, they're, it's like having a reference. So the more references you have to your page, the better that page will be in terms of showing up uh, first on Google. Perfect. Here's a question. I'll take this one. Dion asked, uh, hi there, is there a number of words per post to hit or is it best to change it up long and short? Um, there is no one fits all answer here. It's gonna be different for every post. I'll tell you the way we do it internally at the Hoff when we're writing uh, posts is one, you can go ahead and take a look at what's ranking out there. Are they long form, short term? But more than that, the thing we really value is how long is it gonna to take to answer the question in full? Is it a pretty simple topic that you can answer in 500 words? Um, maybe that's all it takes. If it's a more complex uh, issue, um, then go ahead and take the time and the word count that it needs to fully answer it. So that's what I would do. Take a look at competitors and just really think about how long that topic takes to fully answer the query there. All right, let's see if we have any more coming down. Looks like we got one more here from Eileen. Um, has passage ranking affected your strategy? This is an interesting question. Uh, passage ranking kind of is a loaded loaded term. So I, I would recommend just reaching out to our SEO experts. They can kind of dive deeper into that with you and, and help explain a little bit better. Perfect. All right, Max, we are winding down here. Do we have uh, any more questions that we, uh, that we missed? Looks like we got about 50 people on still. Thank you guys for sticking around. I think we've covered everything there as well, Bobby, from uh, our side of things. I think you uh, both did a great job of answering everything that came our way. All righty. Well, I think that is going to do it then. Thank you for helping, Max. Thanks for everyone for joining us today. Uh, and again, go to the hot.com slash go. Go ahead and book your strategy call. Pick the brains of an expert and lock in your uh, six-month contract double deliverables deal. So. If that is it, thank you guys for joining. It's been a pleasure. Hope you have a great rest of your uh, your Thursday. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Y'all stay safe and take care out there. All righty. See you on the next one.